Hello and welcome to another edition of Doing a Business in Rwanda. You're with me, Narengwa Fiana Muthoni. Africa is racing to slow down and eventually halt the spread of COVID-19, a pandemic that has already shook the continent, claimed lives and sickened thousands of others. Rwanda was the first country in the sub-Saharan Africa to order a total shutdown to mitigate the spread of the virus in the country. Over the next 13 minutes, we spoke to key players in the Rwanda's finance sector to find out how they are navigating the storm that is COVID-19. In a bid to prevent an economic shock, the National Bank of Rwanda floated a liquidity support of 50 billion Rwandan francs for banks to be able to borrow at the central bank rate of 5%. Moreover, it is the normal bank loaning procedures for both commercial banks and its clients. I think the first impact we expect is on the clients of the banks having challenges to service their loans because of... Uh, reduced businesses, especially on the tourism industry, uh, travel industry. Uh, so we expect uh, those to have challenges with their cash flow. So one step we took was to authorize banks uh, in a special way to, uh, to, to deal with these customers that, that would have hardships in servicing their loans, to restructure their loans, uh, to give them breathing space. And as you'd expect, this could create uh, uh, challenges of cash flow to the banks themselves, uh, but also the reduced business activities because of the precautions being taken to limit uh, the, the impact of the virus. Uh, we expect to see uh, limited deposits going to the banks. So on top of allowing banks to restructure these loans, we are putting in place a facility, a liquidity facility, to support banks that might have uh, cash flow challenges because of this uh, situation. And so we put up a facility of uh, 50 billion Rwandan francs that uh, banks can access on our uh, central bank rate. And this is extended beyond the normal uh, central bank facilities that would go for maximum seven days. We are putting this at three six or 12 months. Uh, so th that is one measure that would help uh, is bank that could have financial, uh, I mean, cash flow challenges. Then the other is temporarily we reduced our uh, reserve requirements from 5% to 4% to free some liquidity to the banks over the next six months that can help them to deal with any uh, liquidity shortages. I think as, as the, a large bank in the country, uh, our clients have been affected, so we also have been affected. We've had to activate our business continuity plans. We are still operating, uh, but at a slow pace. And of course, the, most, uh, the biggest problem is that our clients are affected, and many of them cannot uh, uh, pay their loans, uh, and we've had to work with them to defer payments and find other measures to provide relief. Many of our clients have come forward to request some relief in the, in the form of a restructuring. Uh, we've been implementing that for the past uh, couple of days. But also what we've done is uh, to tell clients who don't want to restructure, who wants to still uh, pay their, uh, their commitments, we've told them that uh, we will waive all the late uh, payment charges because we understand everyone is affected in some way or another by this crisis because everyone has cash flow challenges. Even the businesses uh, that are not in the high risk category somehow are affected. So we have decided to reduce our lending rates by half a percent. Um, this is our first move. It's, uh, the move is intended to support those that are uh, struggling under the burden of high interest costs um, during, the, uh, during the pandemic. Um, we have a number of customers who have either uh, lost income or have had to um, accept a reduced uh, income uh, and therefore are uh, struggling under the burden of, uh, of uh, interest rates. And we thought it would be uh, it's, uh, an appropriate time uh, to focus on, uh, on bringing down costs to our customers. So right. the, uh, the actual announcement is a 
half a percent reduction in our base lending rate from 16 and a half to 16 uh, percent. Globally, the stock market has responded to the COVID-19 pandemic with worrying volatility. The market has reacted to the recent unpredictability with large drops. But according to Celestine Dwabukumba, the CEO of the Rwanda Stock Exchange, the effects are yet to be felt here in the local markets. Also, the governor of Central Bank, John Rwangomba, shared that for the next six months, the Central Bank has offered to buy back bonds at the prevailing market rates. Uh, so far, what we have seen, um, you know, the, the levels of liquidity in markets like that, advanced markets is, is very high. Any event, you know, the markets react quickly. So for, for on our part, uh, on this side, uh, the markets don't react as quickly as, as the other markets do, uh, given that um, some of the, 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 the assets we have on the, on the ground are still stable. The numbers are still the same. So the markets have not reacted that much for us. Uh, yet uh, from what we can see so far. So a matter of fact, what we've seen, we've seen uh, um, um, you know, increases um, in volumes, uh, slight increases in volumes. Price stability is still there. You know, the shares have remained flat from the time, the first time we reported the first, uh, uh, for example, the case of uh, uh, the, the, the virus, for example, the, the, the market has remained flat, so the, the shares are not trading much, but the volumes uh, have, uh, from that time, uh, a bit uh, um, um, okay. So there is not that much that has been happening. And if you compare comparatively Q1 2019 and Q1 2020 up to today, uh, we've seen uh, th there was uh, there was uh, an upward trend on the, on some of the the counters, which influence our our main index, uh, which is the All Share Index, uh, has gone up at ten point seven percent, which is basically including all companies um, that are listed on the market. That one is the one which uh, uh, you know influences the market cap too. So whereas the domestic counters um, have remained completely stable. So we have not seen any uh, much movement uh, in, the, in, the, in those directions. Yeah. Uh, to support the investors in our capital markets, uh, just in case you wanted to liquidate your uh, security on the capital market and you're not able to to get buyers on the secondary market, normally we have we had a discount window that uh, if you in the market for 30 days and you don't get buyers, we are ready to, to buy you back your, 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 your security, but then would apply a, a sort of a, a charge of 3% on the market price. The new measure is that you don't have to wait for 30 days, you wait for 15 days, and then you can come to us and we'll buy your security uh, on the market uh, price. According to the spokesperson of the Private Sector Federation, Tionest and Dajinjegwa, some members of the business community in the country are already benefiting from the measures that were put in place by the central bank. Actually, we are happy that the government took that decision because we are now starting with this, uh, seeing the impact of it, uh, especially with loans we had in the banks. And uh, as bank accepted to look into the loans which have been owned by the private sector. They are now trying to see how they can manage the payment, how they can delay the calculation of interest penalties. So for some business people have already starting, started benefiting from the, 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 the proposed plan to help those who are affected by COVID. And also we are hoping that in the near future, most of people are going to also to get loans which are going to help them to continue their businesses once we are that the lockdown is completed or finished. Governments, financial institutions and telecommunication companies are putting more emphasis on cashless payment systems and encouraging physical distancing due to concerns that COVID-19 could be spread by paper money and coins. According to the governor of the central bank here in Rwanda, infrastructure is in place, but how effective is it? more emphasis on the digital channels now that we are limiting the physical contacts. Yeah, it happened. This is technology. At times you have uh, issues here and there, but at least we, we get the commitment from uh, the financial institution that they are going to really double their efforts to make sure that all their systems are up and running without any big problem. Um, we've had an overwhelming response to uh, 
um, the reduction in fees on uh, on the digital banking or our alternative banking channels. As a matter of fact, we've seen a 650% increase in uh, in use of uh, digital channels since the the start um, or since the announcement was made. Um, I think that was back on the 18th of March, uh, if I, if memory s serves me correctly. In times like this, definitely, I wish we were 100% automated, fully automated. However, we are in the process of doing that. Uh, of course, we have taken a few measures here and there to make sure that uh, we, limit, we, we actually eliminate the physical contacts uh, with the members, trading members, general public, into the market. So we have made uh, special arrangements to make sure trading continues uninterrupted. And uh, issuance is taking place. Uh, you know, we have uh, actually an offer right now in the market. Right now, um, of course, at the primary market level, there's a, an ongoing bond right now. And we expect a few uh, companies still to come to market um, in the next few weeks or so, you know, to start uh, to, 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 for listings and stuff like that. So, but but uh, um, coming back to the real automation of the market, we... We have uh, this project which has go, been going on for some time now, uh, we, and we are working on it with our regional counterparts in East African community, which will link us to the, the other stock exchanges in the region. But uh, specifically, we have a, a target date of going live by June this year. Of course, with the current circumstances, we could uh, we are still watching what happens. You know, the, the lockdown, how long it's going to take, is likely to, to influence also on when we are exactly going to go live. But otherwise, the work has been done at 95%. Rwandan banks have set up strategies and interventions to support the local economy during the duration when economic activities are expected to slow down. We understand what INM Bank, as well as a Bank of Kigali, are doing to cushion themselves against the impact of COVID-19. To, uh, to be able to weather the storm, we've made sure that we are uh, in a position where we, rem where we, re we remain liquid. Uh, we will, where it makes, uh, where it makes uh, sense, um, and that is in most cases, um, we will support our customers over the period. Um, you, in fact, will see assets increase within the banks. Um, and it's, it's, been, it's been proven during the 2008 global financial crisis that it's better to stand by your customer and your customer to have a higher debt burden than to deal with a, a liquidation or a, company, or a company going out of business. As far as we are concerned, maybe you remember that we raised uh, fresh equity in late 2018. So we have a very strong equity position that can help us weather any uh, kind of crisis. So we are prepared. Uh, we have also, we've been very prudent in the past. We have, we've taken large impairments for loans. Uh, with the, the new um, um, accounting standards, IFRS 9. So we have good cushions, we have good capital, we have uh, strong liquidity, and we believe these are the, the right ingredients for us to face this crisis and eventually to support recovery when recovery starts. That brings us to the end of today's edition of Doing a Business in Rwanda. I was your host, Naringwa Fiona Muthoni. For more episodes, do visit our website at www.cnbcafrica.com. Thank you so much for watching. It's until next time.